Welcome back to Simbright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. So in this class, I'll be teaching you how to sew this trendy collar with V shape as you are seeing right there. So it's actually a kimono gown, but then it has a cargo pocket. So this um, trendy gown is really fitted is a shift gown i will call it so i'll be teaching you the tips and tricks to making this dress as you can see with cargo pockets so if this is what you want to learn i'll encourage you to stay till the end of this tutorial to learn the tips and tricks to fixing or sewing this color accordingly so stay tuned to the end of this tutorial thank you i'll be using a uh, two ankara different ankara prints for this design so these ankara prints i will not make use of all of them okay ankara cons have six yards but i'll be making use of less than six yards. so at the end of this tutorial I will also let you know how many years i've used but it won't be more than three yards okay so here is the combinations for this i'll just take only one yard one yard will be enough for what we need so now we are going to use this to cut out the bodies so i'll quickly open it up like i said it's six yards so since it's six yards i'll just turn it to the yardage I would love to make use of so I'm going to lay it on the on the length okay because that's we are making a short length for this dress so from here to here I have 45 so uh, the length is very much okay so what I'm going so out of the six years of Ankara right now I'm making use of two yards for the bodies so like I said, we are folding it on the length of the Ankara. So since I have two yards, I'll cut out the remaining four yards. So what I'm doing is separating the remaining four yards. Okay. So I'll be working with these two yards right now. So what I have... To work with now is two yards so this is my two yards out of the six yards so if I have to place my tape from here is on fold I have even more than but two yards is enough 36 is a yard so now the length of the Ankara we are working with is 45 so it's enough for the length of the dress can you see so I'll be using the whole of it so now placing it on fold, a yard, a yard on fold, that is the two yards, you can see it. So this is the folded edge, I'll pick up the folded edge and match it up with the open edge. So if I do that, I'm going to turn it around so the folded, folded part will be the uh, center front and center back of this dress so i'll just arrange it appropriately so after placing it on fold this serves as center front and center back so we'll start off our tutorial by making the border line always make a border line so the border line i'll just come down by one inch okay so that is the first starting line. We call it shoulder line. So this shoulder line, I'm going to take my measurement. So the measurement of I'm going to take, which is necessary for this dress, is the under bust measurement. I know you might be wondering why the under bust measurement. So my under bust is 14. So I will take four and half. Uh, sorry, 14 and half. Okay. So 14 and a half, I'll rule my under bust line. After the under bust line, the next measurement I will take will be my hip line. My waist line, sorry. My waist is 17. I will take 17 
and half. My hip is 29. I'll take 29 and half. That is for stitching. And then, like I said, I'll use the whole length. So I'm going to roll my lines across. These are the necessary lines we need. So now we want to start imputing the horizontal measurement. So center front, center back. The first measurement I want to impute is my shoulder divided by 2, which is um, 8 inches. I'll mark. After marking it, I'll mark the neckline. We are using 3.5 for our neckline. And neck depth, 1 inch for the back. So I'm going to connect the back neck depth. I'll connect the back neck depth. Now, here comes the, the this design. So for this particular style that we are making, on the under bust line, we are going to come in from the under bust line by 2 or 1.75. Let us do 1.75. 1 3 quarter. So make sure it's 1 3 quarter. Okay, so I'm making sure it's 1 3 quarter. This is my 1.75. So at this 1.75, I'm going to connect the 1.75 directly to the neck depth of 3.5. So that will serve as the front neck depth. And this will serve as the back neck depth. So by the time we cut out the back, we we'll separate the back and cut out the front as usual. So after connecting this to the under bust, well, it depends on how you actually want it okay although what we have on the thumbnail there is below the under bust so we can do two inches below the under bust so two inches below my under bust already is um the under bust measurement i took here is 14 i added half an inch so it's already one two so it's almost getting close to my waistline so what we can do from this 14 and a half let's do one and a half that is 16 before we connect so because that's what we have there is actually very very you know almost to the waistline so from here i will now come in with my 1.75 one point seven five one point seven five so i'm going to remark and i'm going to rule it again so wherever you choose you can also have it on the under bust is okay so but wherever you want it just simply go ahead and do this this is what you are supposed to do then we are going to cut it out from here at 1.75 connected to 3.5 all right so next we want to do from the shoulder divide by two i'm going to measure my uh my the length of my sleeve the length of my sleeve is not going to be that um long because i still have it get to the elbow so we'll make use of eight inches and i'll add half an inch for stitching the eight inches okay or let's leave it at half an inch. We'll use the other fabric to complete it. So now I'm going to take the opening. I'm going to come down, sorry. I'm going to come down by, by 1.5. That is shoulder slant before we take the kimono opening. So I'll connect all the way from the 3.5 to the 1.5. That is the kimono sleeve opening. So now, from this point, from this point, I'll now take the sleeve opening. So usually for kimono opening, I like to make it very open. 
okay so i like to take 11 inches 11 inches is including seam allowance so i'll just go ahead at that point i'm going to connect from here to here can you see that so that will be my kimono sleeve opening so by the time i stitch one inch i'll come return back to 10 inches so the next thing we'll do is to come over to the waistline and take the waist measurements so my waist measurement i'm working with here is 40. on my waist i measure my waist divide, divide by 4 40 which is 10. this is fitted so since it's a fitted dress i'll work with one and a half fitted and work with one inch add another one inch for sewing so everything will give me two and a half so just add two and a half to your waist circumference divide by two because the dress is a little bit fitted then coming over to the hip i measure my hip divide by four and working with eleven and a half i'll add two and a half to it whatever you add here add here everything will reflect so i added two and a half here i added two and a half so for the hip i'll take what i have on the hip to this point so here i have 14 then i'll come in back here and i'll measure 14. so i'll measure my 14 on the hem so everything is including same allowance so i'll go ahead and connect straight from hip to hem after connecting from hip to hem i'll now connect from the hip to the waist then from this from the whatever i have on the waist on the waistline everything i have on the waistline here is um, 12 and a half okay so this 12 and a half i'll come on the under I will come on this line, this 11 inches, and measure 12 and a half. I believe you understand. On this 11 inches mark, I'll come to the center front of it and measure 12 and a half. This is my 12 and a half. So I simply connect a straight line from there. Connect, use my, I'll use this part of my ruler. Okay, because that place will give us that shape. Then here, you can do the kimono curve. Okay, so that is it. So now I'm going to cut out what I have on this dress. So I'm going to cut what I have on the dress. Then make sure you check your measurements to be sure you have what you desire. So now... I will cut ahead and cut right now. So you first cut the back neckline first cut the back neckline okay so now i'm going to place my notch on the center front then take away the, uh, what I have in words. So this one I took away is the back dress. And then I will arrange it back and cut out the front dress. So make sure you properly arrange before you cut. 
properly arranged before you cut so i'm i think i've cut i've arranged it appropriately now so i'm going to cut the neckline i'll cut the front neck line so i'm cutting it all the way to that one 0.75 and cut out so once you get here make a notch this way at half an inch it should not be more than half an inch that will be our stitching point so after cutting this is what i have so this is a half an inch i told you to make notch diagonally what to do is to take the measurement of the pocket because you are going to sew the pocket first before we join the front and the back so for the pocket i'll just place my tape on the shoulder line to the waistline so we already have the waistline so from the waistline just simply come down from your waistline by two inches for your pocket this is two inches from my waistline and that is where the pocket will start from so from the center front line on that line on these two inches below from this line I'm going to take two and a half inches away from the center front so two and a half inches away this is my mark and that is where the pocket will start so from here my pocket opening here is at seven inches because of the kind of pocket you are making and the height of the pocket is going to be your hip measurement so you have to go back and place your tape on the waistline so waistline is 17 i added half an inch and this is my hip measurement so already i have my hip measurement so my pocket can go as high as to the hip well my hip is a little bit high so it depends on your size so what our advice is just place your tape and take seven inches or eight inches is okay for your pocket so i'll just use eight inches because i have a longer hip but if you have a shorter hip just simply from your waist eight inches you take your hip measurement so from here i'll mark two and half again i'm trying to create a straight line for this pocket and this is it now i'm trying to create a straight line i'll mark again the eight inches and this is it then the pocket width is seven inches is a squared pocket this is it so I've already created the pocket shape so once I cut out my pocket I'll simply come into this box and drop it so the same thing I did here I'll also do the home I want to show you how I cut my pocket so my pocket is two here and the width of the pocket I have here is um, I have the width of my pocket at 15 inches and the height of the pocket I took first the casing of the rope at one and a half then I measured my the height of the pocket we measured on the dress and added one inch to it so that is how to go about it so now I'm going to fold this pocket into two and I'll be measuring, I'm going to take the measurement of uh, pocket width, which we took, what, which was seven, seven inches, divide by two is three and a half. So I'll just make a mark at three and a half. So this mark I made at three and a half, I'm going to make a notch, place a notch to it because this is a cargo pocket. So... As a cargo pocket, I'll show you how to go about it. So make sure on the damp part you have the notch. So this is the notch. I just want to make this one prominent. All right, so the notch will be there and we'll go over to stitch the casing. So for the casing, simply fold it to touch the line once it touches but before that before this after making this notch this uh, um, notch on the damp part we'll also create another notch on the 
casing on the casing point so this line i'll fold it and make another notch that will serve as our guide so you can see the notches i made on the pocket now so i'll pick up one pocket to demonstrate how to go about this dress so i will go ahead and fold first i will make this touch this that is the casing the rope casing then that notch can you see that so i'll fold it on the notch so i'll go over to my ironing table i'm going to iron out this before i stitch okay so that is the first thing you are going to do once you fold the casing you stop stitch so we have a rope for the pocket so i've already cut out the rope the width of this is one and a half and the length of my rope is 17 inches for the both of them so i'll first go ahead and sew this rope i'll fold in half an inch and half and just kiss them once you kiss them you kiss it again and top stitch i'm done top stitching the both of them so i'll go ahead and fold it together this way okay so once you fold it together you make a mark on it i want to open up the casing for the rope so this is the center front i'll just come just very close behind it although this method i'm using for opening this is not we have a different way of doing it but this will also work for you so just open a little for the rope casing just a little so i'll just go ahead and this. okay so that opening i'll follow there and pass the rope so i've already not the rope and i have four of them for the pocket two for one pocket so i'll just pick up two of it this is the knotted part of the rope so just go ahead and knot it this way that's all that's what i did so i'll use my safety pin and pass my rope so like i said this tiny opening i made here you have to be very careful when you are making this kind of opening so i'll just go ahead and stitch on this side then i'll also use the same method and pass this one through this space and stitch so just make sure the opening is very small so if the opening is small it will be easy to the for the rope okay to cover up that space although there's another method of doing this but i'll use this method for this class so i'll go to the machine now and stitch i will do that for all the damn part you know we made two notches because the measurement of what we need um for this particular um height is se uh, seven inches so i'll just from this notch to notch i'll just make little gathers just little I'll draw little gathers to it. So as I'm drawing the gathers, I'll be taking my whole measurement to be sure I have seven to notch. I have three inches and the whole length of my pocket is the whole length of my pocket is seven inches. So since I have three inches from this notch, notch to notch that I made this uh, notch, we have four inches remaining. So I'll mark two inches here and uh, mark from here I'll mark another two inches then from this part I will go in by one inch I'll fold in by one inch and from here I'll fold in by one inch so just make all of this notch so from this point I'll match it up I'll make it fold it like a rectangle um, like a triangle okay this way so we are going to sew it this way from here we'll match it up this way so it's a cargo pockets so now after this you can go ahead and iron it you can see how i have it then now from here to here we have our seven inches which is the measurement of the pocket so let me just i have eight inches here so i don't want it to gather too much so we can use eight inches 
okay we can use eight inch although we measure seven inches so now after that i'll fold in i'll take my time and fold in this part again okay i'm folding in this part at one inch i'm folding it at one inch because the measurement of the height of our pockets is the height of our pocket is eight inches in total so here i have exactly what i need eight inches in total so i'll go over to my ironing table and iron this what i've just made now i'll iron it very well then i'll show you how to sew it to the dress so i bring in the dress this is the square part I told you we are going to sew this. So I'll go back to my machine now. I'm going to sew on the squared line. You know the shape is like a triangle, but we'll push it in on that square. Okay, so that's how you get the effect of that cargo. You keep it straight. I'll bring this one on the straight part too. I'll also position is straight okay so after positioning is straight like i said we later made this at um at eight inches so i'm going to increase the length of this now i'm going to increase the length of it because what we had at sweet here is seven inches but i'll make it eight inches so I'll just increase the length at 8 inches, okay? Please try and have this correction done. So that is will be my guide, guideline, the 8 inches. So because already we have 8 inches on the waist. From here to here, we measured 8 inches, okay? On that gathered part. So... I will now start sewing. So I'll first go ahead and sew straight. I will bring this one on the 8 inches line. I will sew straight. So this is how you are going to sew. So after sewing that, then this gathered part automatically falls on the line. Can you see? Automatically it falls on this line. So let me stitch it. Now I've sewn the pocket. So this is what I did like I earlier demonstrated. I have to force the uh, V-shaped pocket into the straight part. So it will have that uh, effect you are seeing right there on the video. Okay, so this effect. And this one I pleated a little. I stitched and I also stitched at interval of 0 0.75. So if you look at it, you can see my stitching lines can you see that so if you want this pocket you know our measurement of the pocket was eight inches but i will advise if you want it as it is right there on the video instead of eight inches this is even seven and a half you can make the length of your pocket 10 inches and push it back can you see if you want this effect a little more Instead of measuring after folding from a folding point that time, the one and a half, instead of measuring nine inches, I will advise you add three inches to it, 12 inches for this pocket. But when you are sewing, you also sew it back. I believe you understand. So that means this side you also gather a little, gather a little, so you'll be able to have that effect. That if you want that effect. So that is that for the pocket. But what we have here is also good. We have a little of it. But if you want it much, extend the length of your pocket. So I've gone ahead to sew the neckline. You can see the neckline. I've joined back and front together. So the next thing we'll do is to take the measurement of what we have on the neckline. So I'll be taking the measurement from where I have the notch. Okay, that is where I have the notch. So I'll take that measurement from here to the joint to this point. I have 6.25. That 6.25, I'll multiply it by 2. Whatever thing I, I have, I'll add it to the measurements 
of what I have on my neckline this way. So here I have 8 inches at the whole back plus 16.25. I will add another 16.25. I have 41 in total. So here I've already hasted my collar. So you can see the collar is hasted and is on fold. The width of this collar measures three and a half, and the length of this collar measures 45. So remember that we note that we used, we had um, the total round neck collar measurement was 41, but add four inches, whatever you get, add four inches. That's why I have 45. So this 45 inches now that we have, I'm going to place it unfold this way so this will be the center back of our collar and i'm going to create my notch for the center back of the collar so if you look at the center back you will see that the neck at the back is higher so i use three and a half for the center back but for the front center front i'll use two and half i'm using two and half Okay, including seam allowance two and a half, and I'll mark. So now I'll come in with my ruler, I'll slant it a little this way. Can you see how I slant it? Just don't make it so prominent. Can you see that? So, the most important thing is that the front part of this collar is at two and half so this two and half i have now i'm going to cut the excess i'm cutting the excess following the chalk line i made and i'll just blend it into the three and a half i believe you understand i just blend it into the three and a half so here which is the color is bigger than what we have so now another thing is the shape the v shape we have at the center front at the side i'll come up by by one inch and i'm going to create that v shape can you see i'll create that v shape so if you want it deeper you can also if you want it more sharp you can come up by one and a half but i think what we have here is okay or i can go up a little more by one and a half let me do one and a half it's still okay so that part will be sharp at the end of the day so i'll connect it so from that one and a half i'll cut it to nothing so it forms that v for us so now another thing is So after placing it on fold like this, make sure it's equal. So this folded part is the center back uh, collar line. So from there, I'll place my tape and I'm going to take my measurements at 14. Okay, so you mark 14 inches. If you want it exactly the way it is on the video, you mark 14 inches. But if you don't want it too open, you can do 13 or 12 inches. But it should not be less than 12 inches, so it will be able to pass your neck. So I'm going to sew on this creased line. I'm going to sew and stop before half an inch. Please stop before half an inch because we'll still turn this part. So I'll go to the machine now. I'll arrange it very well. Stitch from this 14 and stop at half an inch. So I've gone ahead to sew from that 14 inches and stopped at half an inch. So I will turn the collar again. So this is how I will turn the collar. So I'm turning it and laying it flat. Can you see? So when I lay, lay it flat, this is what I will have. This is the opening for the collar. So if you notice, I left half an inch. So I will just do what? Invert this part. Can you see? I will go to my machine now and neatly put this part in when you are sewing it. Just neatly stitch at 0 0.5. I'll do the same this side. So this is what you are going to have after I 
turned it and stitched i stitched and turn like i demonstrated so it will now give you that end that sharp end so now we'll bring in our fabric and i'm going to start stitching i'll first of all match the center back this is center back i'll come in with the center back make sure you have your notches this is how the dress is going to look like this way okay that's how we are it's going to lay so it depends on how you want it to lay okay so let me lay it this way then the notch i have this is it so if it's going to lay this way that means you will turn it this way and match so i'm going to secure with my pin and i will sew from this notch till i get to this end let me do that you can see i'm done sewing like i said start from the notch match notch to notch so when you sew round you are going to terminate at that point we notched so this is what we notched can you see that so now i'm going to push this in to the front and what we have here we are going to fold it to the back this way okay so i'm going to secure it with my pin at the back i'll just secure it with my pin at the back later we are going to take off the pin as well so just hold it down with the pin so after holding it down with the pin i will now turn to the front so we are going to stitch top stitch that's what we are going to do so my top stitching i'll start from here and go this way i'll follow the shape of this this way i'll go this so i just went ahead to top stitch only on this part okay because it was not really looking nice top stitching this way so just go ahead and top stitch here back stitch and top stitch is okay at that point so now this is what we have as a collar so you can see it's actually looking neat so by the time you give it a good press everything relaxes nice and flat so the next thing i'm going to do is to close up the side but before i close up the side i'm going to take the measurement of the sleeve i will be sewing an additional sleeve to it so i have 21 inches so i'm going to cut my band right now for the sleeve at 21 so i've cut out 21 inches which i just measured and the width on fold the width on fold is three inches or, or 3.25 it depends on how bold you want so i'll come in with my dress i'll come in with it now i'll simply go ahead and join i'm attaching it from one end to the other then later i will top stitch so i will have it this way so let me do that then i'll close up the side and we are done with this class after sewing the band just make notches on the armhole for ease of turning and cut out the excess right at the collar thank you for watching see you in the next